those who say Arabs enslaved Africans. So Islam is a slave master religion. People, this is an argument that was really first uh, advanced by Orientalists. And Orientalists were really Western scholars who saw uh, Islam as a threat to Western authority, hegemony in the world. And they came up, they advanced this in academic circles first and foremost, that the Arab slave trade was worse than the European slave trade. Now, the Afrocentrics, the Pan-Africanists, et cetera, they pick this argument up, which is a quite, uh, inter it's, a, it's an interesting phenomenon to me that on the one hand, the Afrocentric, the Pan-Africanist, will say that the white man can't be trusted and that the white man is the, the problem with the world. But they utilize all of the white man's research to teach them about the world. Um, so that's, that's an issue. I don't believe that the Arab, I don't think that the evidence is strong that the Arab slave trade was a bigger matter than the European slave trade. I don't know which one was worse. What I do know is that slavery, as it was executed or carried out by European Americans, as the uh, noted Professor Kenneth Stamp said, it was a peculiar institution. There's no other slavery ever in the history of the world that existed and th that had the effect, and it, it was the way of the kind of slavery that was in the antebellum South because that slavery was a slavery designed to deform our nature as a people. So did the Arabs have slaves? Yes. Did the Turks have slaves? Yes, no doubt about it. And in the history, we have to be clear, the record says that they even enslaved Eastern Europeans. Hence the word slave comes from Slav, and the Slavic people come from Eastern Europe. They were whites. The Mamluk Empire, which was a particular dynasty of, 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 of rulers, that arose in Egypt, they started off as slaves. They were white slaves who rebelled. So the Muslims practiced slavery. That's number one. Number two, I would say that the way in which the Muslims practiced slavery, it was in complete violation of the way in which Al-Islam addressed the slave problem or the slavery issue. When al-Islam came, it did not outright, the Quran and the tradition of our prophet, prayers and peace be upon him, they do not outright outlaw slavery. But slavery as a practice in Islam is not slavery as we understand it in the world, let alone new world slavery. For example, we are not permitted in Islam to invade nations, capture men, women, and children, and sell them in the slave market. That's not the type of slavery Islam is addressing. On the, uh, 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 on the basis of it, that type of slavery is outlawed. We're not permitted to do that. So people will say, well, why is there slavery anyway? Slavery in Islam was akin to the same slavery that we have in America today. When you go to prison, you have no rights as a citizen. And they put you to work. You're a captive. You're a ward of the state, like that old movie, State Property. Well, that's the type of slavery that existed in the old world. People went to war, they were war captives. And those people who were cap uh, captives of war were sold. But in no way in Islam are we authorized to invade another people's land and steal them for no reason. That's the number one problem. And Muslims did that. And when they did that, they were in absolute violation of the religion. So we can't judge the religion by them. We have to judge them by the religion or according to the religion. So that's, that's one thing. The second thing is the prophet, prayers and peace be upon him, he actually forbade even the separation of animals when it comes to the parent from the child. He discouraged that. So in, our, in this society, you know, people breed dogs. They have puppies. And if you take the puppy away from the mother, that puppy will cry. It will be frustrated. It will exhibit anxiety. Very clearly, you can see it. The prophet forbade that. So that is, uh, by analogy, it was understood, and he forbade this practice as well, which I'm about to mention, the separation of parent from child as a slave. So we are thinking about slavery in the savagery of man, the savagery of human beings. Human beings have committed savage acts. And when we think, when we look at how al-Islam addresses slavery, we're saying, oh, al-Islam permits savagery, but it doesn't. 
So that's why it wasn't outright forbidden. What, how it was addressed in the Quran and how it was addressed in the teachings of the prophet, even for those who were captives of war, the prophet, he let captives of war go if they taught his companions how to read. He let captives of war go simply because people came to ask, for, ask him, can you let these captives go? Um, so, and in the Quran, Allah, Allah, he lifts up the freeing of a neck, the freeing of slaves as one of the highest uh, um, forms of, of acts of worship. Even the money of zakat that we have to pay, which is the obligatory tax that we pay in Islam, one of the uses for it is the freeing of a neck. Um, so, this I'm, I'm, I'm just laying that there's more detail to it, but that's a good basis to understand the difference between slavery and Islam as a concept and slavery as practice in the world by people who claim Islam. Those who went into East Africa, those who uh, uh, went into the Sudan, and when I say Sudan, I'm talking about from East Africa all the way to West Africa. That, that's what it was called in the old sources. Who came there as slave raiders and in, 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 in slaverers, they were not practicing Islam in those acts. They were following Satan. They were following the devil. Now, having said all that, let's circle back around to the European slave trade. The slavery that we endured here in America was designed to deform us what they call in the scientific world to denature us. To denature something is when you take it and you alter its nature. So for example, black women who perm their hair, your hair is naturally straight, but when you perm it, you make it straight. That's called denaturing. You're changing it from its nature as God made it. I'm, I'm putting, they don't say that as God made it in science. That's, that's my, my add on as a Muslim. Slavery as it was practiced among us was designed to denature us to take away not only family, mother from child, ch uh, 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 child from parent, parent from grandparent, etc. But it was also designed to destroy our respect for one another. So the mother doesn't see the father as her authority. Why? The slave master owns the father too. The, the, the father doesn't see his wife as having any value. Why? Because nine times out of ten, not only did he get her pregnant, but the slave master had his way with her as well. Um, we were denied education. We were denied really anything that would serve to establish us as a people who were fully human. Our humanity was denied. Our freedom to manage ourselves in community, to have community responsibility was denied. And as I said, no other form of slavery, and I can go even further, no other form of human mistreatment in the history of the world is as great as the mistreatment that was meted out to those slaves who were brought here from Africa. And it's because of that that the Orientalist tries to do what he does often in a lot of Western scholarship, divert the attention from his own self, divert the attention from his own crime, divert the attention from his own savagery. So he wants to take our attention away from his acts and point it towards Islam or the Arabs because he knows in the mind of the public he can associate Arab with Islam. But Islam is, is not dominant or, or the Arab world is not the biggest population of Muslims. Muslims are in the Philippines. Muslims are in Indonesia. Muslims are in Malaysia. 500 million in Africa. So the Arabs are not the Muslims. The Muslims are the Muslims. <laughs> so, but that's what he does. And I would advise African Americans to not fall for it. Don't drink that Kool-Aid. Because if you do, you're falling for the same trick that was initiated by the same mind that gave you that Bible when he made you a slave. He gave you your education when he freed you from slavery. And he's giving you, you your perception of how you should view Islam. Why? Because he knows if you were to become Muslim, then our generations, in our generations, we'll produce more Malcolms. We'll produce more Muhammad Ali's. And he knows then that when that happens, his rule is over. 